بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اولا ایکسپینڈ مائی چیسٹ ایز مائی ٹاسکس ان تھائی دا ناٹس ان مائی ٹنگ سر دیٹ دے می انڈرسٹینڈ می آئی ایم حیدر مہدی اینڈ دس از دا سیکنڈ سیشن آف مائی ریڈنگس فرام دی اسینڈنٹ قرآن این ایڈوانسڈ انگلش ٹرانسلیشن آف دا قرآن بائی امام محمد الحاسی اینڈ پبلش بائی ڈاکٹر ظفر بنگش اینڈ دی انسٹیٹیوٹ آف کنٹمپری اسلامک تھاٹ ان کینیڈا I will uh, read and recite the translation uh, for about 10 minutes uh, every day, uh, inshallah, and we'll, we'll, we will continue to do so till we have read the entire Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all in this venture. I hope that those who watch it and listen to the Holy Quran, to the Quran, are able to benefit from it, especially those who do not understand Arabic, and want to understand and imbibe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. I start with Surah Fatiha, the first of the 114 surahs of the Quran. I will also read out the summary of every surah uh, as provided by the translation, uh, by the translator and the publisher at the beginning of the surah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha. The inaugurator, primary, foremost. This is the summary. This is one of those surahs in the Quran that has been designated by many titles. And uh, I will share that in my screen as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Fatiha. The inaugurator, primary, foremost. This is one of those surahs in the Quran that has been designated by many titles and names, over 20 to be precise. The well-established ones include Fatiha al-Kitab, the book's opening chapter, al-Sab al-Mathani, the seven adorations of the seven reiterations, Umm al-Quran, the origin of the Quran, and Umm al-Kitab, the origin of scripture. The words Fatiha refers to the human effort of moving something out of the way as in clearing a path of obstacles or obstructions. And the first effort in that endeavor is called Al-Fatiha. In one sense, the surah is called Al-Fatiha as it is the first surah, the first effort of the Quran to remove hindrances or hurdles that may impede the required assimilation into its meanings. The first ayah in this surah, in the name of Allah, the mercy-giving, the very merciful, is referred to as the Basmallah. Revealed in Mecca, this is the first surah to be revealed as a whole. However, the position it occupies in the chronological order of revelation is not clear. Suffice it to say that it is one of the four surahs to be revealed immediately after Surah Al-Alaq. This surah has seven ayat. The overview. Surah Al-Fatiha is the passageway to the recitation of the Quran, the performance of the Salah, and many other efforts that Muslims may embark on to gain Allah's acceptance. In it are three elements that combine the objectives and rationale of the Quran. Number one, man's praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, affirmation by man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's integrity and unity on the one hand, and his own accountability and resurrection on the other hand. And number three, man's solicitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he needs in life and afterlife. In a manner of speaking, it could be said that this surah introduces both the theoretical as well as the practical aspects of the Quran. In another uh, conceptualization, Surah Al-Fatiha may be said to have Two components, the combination of the metaphysical with the physical, the other worldly with the worldly, or the haqiqa with the sharia. This is encapsulated in the divine words, to you alone do we conform and from you alone do we ask for help. Al-Fatiha was first placed first in the Quran because it can easily be understood as an introduction to the contents of all the other surahs revealed in Mecca. 
as it may have been one of the first five surahs sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the summary. Let me now start with the reading. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the mercy giving, the very merciful. All gratitude and appreciation are due to Allah alone, the sustainer of all the worlds with their biospheres, domains, celestial bodies, humanities and cosmos. The mercy giving, the very merciful, the domain, Lord of the judgment. To you alone do we conform and from you alone do we ask for help. Guide us to the straight way throughout our lifelong efforts, the way of those upon whom you have bestowed your blessings, not those who have incurred your wrath, nor those who go the wrong way. As you may have noticed, uh, for example, in uh, ayat number six, you see these brackets in which says throughout our lifelong efforts. These uh, phrases that have been inserted have been done so, so that the context of the ayat and its meaning is better understood by the uh, reader or the listener. I now move towards start the reading of Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. Uh, this surah is called Al-Baqarah, the cow, in reference to the narrative they run about the cow, the vacillating children of Israel were ordered to slaughter, which they went about doing in circuitous and mostly contentious manner. This is the only place in the Quran that this narrative about the children of Israel has been cited. Surah Al-Baqarah may be the first surah to have been revealed in Medina. The surah's length corresponds to the length of its revelation in Medina, meaning that some of its ayat were revealed upon the Prophet's arrival in Medina, while others were revealed during his years there. And yet others were revealed at the end of his treasured life in that city of light. Of course, during all his years in Medina, other surahs were revealed there as well. In the chronological order of revelation, Al-Baqarah is considered to be the 87th surah, revealed after Surah Al-Mutaffifin, those who fell short, and before Surah Al-Imran, the family of Imran. It is composed of 286 ayats. Overview. The surah covers a vast array of subject issues and developments. Some ayat prove the preeminence of Islam over other convictions, leading to other ayat that clarify canons and codes required by a living, <clears throat> developing and expanding Islamic social order. It begins with certain Arabic alphabetical letters that are meant to challenge the Arabic speaking people at the very heart of their historical, cultural, and national pride, their language. Attention is then drawn to the quality and superiority of this divine writ insofar as the preeminence of its construct and the value of its information. People in an Islamic society and state are designated to belong to four categories. Number one, committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two, opposed to Allah and His Prophet. Number three, publicly agreeable to Allah and His Prophet, but privately opposed to them. And number four, those who had received divine revelation in times past, but when the Quran and Prophet appeared in Arabia, had taken a position that can generally be described as either unresponsive or hostile. Before the consolidation of an Islamic domain, people were either for or against it. After that consolidation uh, took place in Medina, a third classification of people emerged. These, these, those whose words were Islamic, but whose intentions were un-Islamic or anti-Islamic, the munafiqs. 
This is a personality that conceals a very serious type of animosity towards the committed Muslims, with, who are called Mormons, by the way, with a veneer of impressive and sympathetic dialogue. The surah presents this broad public enough information to guide everyone to Allah, provided they themselves choose such guidance. As the surah progresses, there are ayah about the genesis or the origins of man's creation. Human social beings are told they are superior with their God-guided knowledge, even though the angels questioned the rationale for putting social animals on earth. How the hostility of Saturn erupted towards Adam salam, the first social human being, and his descendants is also chronicled. On quite a few occasions, people of prior scriptures, particularly those who say they follow the Torah, express their extreme dislike and even animosity towards the Quran and Muhammad sallallahu They refuse to go along with and incorporate Quranic and new prophetic meanings into their social surroundings. These people of preceding scriptures had a status of eminence in the Arabian Peninsula with the unlettered Arabians looking up to them as a community with this prophetic history and scriptural scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only reminds them of his blessings upon them and his history with them, but also how they deviated away from him, a deviation bordering on kufr and blasphemy. Much of this negative and undesirable history is that of the children of Israel, beginning with the generation of Musa alayhi salam. These titles bearers are presented with a sordid history as they bothered and troubled many prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, these very same troublemakers, when presented with the Quran and its prophet, demonstrated their suspicion and resentfulness, which ultimately culminated in their ill will, animosity, and hostility. The bearers of the title Children of Israel extended their ill feeling and enmity towards the archangel Jibrail alayhi salam. The ayah in the surah, in fact, devaluate those who allege a bloodline of honor to the household of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Their earth yearning human, their earth yearning human nature, and their attachment to worldly life is exposed. Their verbal deviousness in addressing the Prophet is also brought to light. The mushriks and some people of Scripture are paired together in their hatred of Islam. The reader is informed that some Jews and some Christians are at loggerheads with each other as to who is truly God-guided. Even though they share a number of common hostilities against the community of committed Muslims, the mushriks are singled out for their extreme animosity towards the latter, evidenced by their forbidding the committed Muslims for raising public consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sanctified masjid al-masjid al-haram in Makkah. And how by doing so they diminish and destroy the significance of the sanctified masjid. The mushriks are confronted with Allah's illustration of power and authority. They are reminded of inevitable facts in the afterlife when they will be at a distance from their erstwhile earthly leaders. The ayat then move on to elucidate the merits and features of Al-Masjid Al-Haram and the one who built it, his plea to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning his offspring to guide them is registered for all times to come. The fact that Muslim Islam is constructed upon Abrahamic foundations, which is the affirmation of Allah's integrated, integrated divinity and authority is clearly established. The ayat clarify that the Abrahamic creed and constitutes of conviction do not endorse what Judaism and Christianity have become. From the inception of Muhammad وسلم, and the Quran, the Kaaba and Makkah would now be the touchstone and benchmark of Allah's deen. As such, some consecrated rituals now would now be the touchstone and benchmark of Allah's deen. As such, some consecrated rituals pertaining to Makkah are outlined. 
The Judeo-Christian controversy about the Qibla is explained, exposed and put to rest. Allah's, word teach, Allah's words teach that the upliftment of the spirit, the purification of the heart and the refinement of character are more important than arguing about physical prayer direction. In this way, some of the succeeding ayat indicate that the law of overriding previous ayat or previous prophetic experiences is part of developing an Islamic society and an Islamic reality. Nonetheless, lessons should be learned from the events of the past and from the mistakes of the others. Hence, there are news items in this surah about past generations, bygone nations, about different prophets, and the distinction of divine laws pertaining to different societies in different ages. Finally, there is guidance outlining practical worldly practices and procedures, the law of retribution, bequest and inheritance, regulations, abstaining from food, water and conjugal relations, dedicating nights in the masjid to be with Allah alone, ittakaf, hajj, pilgrimage, jihad, family relationships and cogency. Some financial transactions, spending for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and charity, intoxicants, orphans, market activity, usury and debt. Legally binding testimony, lien, marriage, injunctions pertaining to women. The idda, woman's retreat or waiting period pertaining to divorce or death, divorce and breastfeeding, child support, some dietary guide, guidelines and solemn undertaking. The surah wind, winds down with a supplication that ties together much of the characteristics of the Islamic way of life. Throughout the surah, there are ayat glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and highlighting his attributes, ayat speaking of Islam's inclusivism and grace, and ayat that are analogies. Committed Muslims are advised to be patient in harsh conditions and hard times, to break out of literal constrictions. That is, their deeds and interpretations of meanings should not be held hostage to technicalities and minutia, and to be cultured in dialogue and civilized in discussion. So we have now come to the end of the summary I will start the recitation and the reading of the Ascendant Quran Al-Baqarah in my next uh, session tomorrow, inshallah. I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this reading of the Quran of all those who are listening and watching. And I hope that uh, those who are listening and are able to benefit from this uh, also take it upon themselves to perhaps pick up a copy of the Ascendant Quran themselves and read it, share it with others. Please share my uh, readings of the Quran with those who would want to understand the, lang the message of the Quran in, a la in an easily understanding, uh, understandable English language, especially to our young uh, especially those living outside uh, the Muslim world, uh, outside Pakistan, where I'm from, living in North America and Europe. So thank you very much again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our reading, our recitation of the Quran. Alhamdulillahi ilahi ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ilahi ameen.